Hello, internets. So the time has come to seriously talk about unhinged and irrational behavior within political movements and group dynamics, and how it just kills political movements. Because recently, Lauren Southern released a pretty spicy video titled The Whole Truth, that I'm sure some people have seen already, about problems and poor behavior within certain leaders of the dissident right, namely Milo and Paul Joseph Wilson. And for an extra spicy two-for-one sale, Destiny also released a manifesto about some very similar problems on the left in BreadTube, which goes into problems with certain figures like Vosh, of course, but also delves into toxic and out-of-line behavior by people in the left in general. And I'm going to be playing some Dragon Spirit and doing this as a game rant, because a dragon flying around laying waste to everything provides some pretty solid symbolism for what these two people have just released. Now, one thing I should make clear is that this video will not really be a response to the Dudurama. Whether Lauren is the one telling the truth, or if everything she says about Milo, Anarchy UK, and PJW is true, I'm gonna leave that mostly alone. Same goes for drama on the left with Hassan and Bosch that Destiny brought up, because quite frankly, it's kind of a he said, she said sort of situation, and most of it's not too surprising if you've paid attention to these influencers at all with any level of skepticism. Famous figures have been backstabbing each other, sometimes literally, for thousands of years. The drama doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but what does matter, and what this video's primary topic will be about is the far more important underlying cause of that drama, which provides a cautionary tale that everyone can and should learn from, which is how her experiences with the downfall of a lot of the MAGA movement from 2017, and similar downfalls of BreadTube we are currently witnessing, showcases how idiotic, dishonest, and completely unhinged behavior could absolutely destroy political movements from within, if those issues are not properly addressed at least. Because a lot of what they had to say serves as excellent examples of how this type of internal squabbling and lack of introspection and other cringe just absolutely poisons everything. Anyways, I believe the best way to combat unhinged behavior is to learn to identify a few problems that lead to it. The first issue I've noticed is poor behavior within group dynamics as a result of the group refusing to accept criticism. I believe Lauren Southern actually provided the best example of this when explaining why she moved right wing in the first place. To make a long story short, she came across some feminists and noticed that the modern feminist movement has a lot of unfortunate misandry in it and other nonsense that basically has nothing to do at all with women's rights or their value as human beings. This completely turned her off from the third wave of feminist movement and caused her to step more towards being a conservative. And now, I've mentioned this before in comments, and I plan to go more in detail this with my BreadTuber episode on Sean, but my basic take on feminism is that I agree with what feminism claims to be, but disagree with what it actually is, especially as it has been fully subverted by the cult of woke to the point where it seems to treat women as pawns for socialist economic ideas, with women's rights being nothing more than just lip service. And I suspect there are a lot of people who probably agree with my sentiment here, which likely is a big reason why feminism was targeted by the YouTube skeptic community in the previous decade. But the real question here is, how did feminism find itself in this sad state of affairs? The answer to that, I believe, can be found in the fact that much of the third wave feminist groups are incapable of handling any form of criticism, and instead conflate all criticism with harassment or falsely label it as misogyny or hatred of some sort. And when this happens, there's an extremely toxic cycle that's created, because rejecting all criticism of the group's ideology means that you are rejecting both criticism that is constructive and fact-based, along with the bad faith criticism. As a result, any sane person who has a legitimate and factual critique of an aspect of the ideology or movement is mislabeled as a traitor, or hater, or outsider, and then ejected from the ideology, rather than a mature and good faith attempt to understand that internal criticism. This then results in the group drawing further from reality, which then leads to more sane people within the movement to create more criticism, which of course, they are then ejected, and now there are even less sane people, and the group's beliefs draw even further and further from reality, and this cycle then just repeats itself until only the most fervent, die-hard, but also completely insane and detached from reality members are left. But hey, at least you got ideological purity now because that's just the natural result of failure to accept good criticism. This results in movements adopting what I like to call unsustainable beliefs, which is a belief that is obviously and demonstrably false to the average person, and only believed within the group's echo chamber. Because the average Joe outsider can easily spot the bullshit for what it is, this makes the belief unsustainable because it's just a matter of time before the belief is exposed to the public for being ridiculous and causing the group to look like complete unhinged lunatics as a result. In the case of feminism, their recent unsustainable belief was the whole 
don't-believe-all-woman idea, the mentality which recently train-crashed into the wall of reality with the Amber Heard and vs. Johnny Depp trial, with the result being that even many leftist mainstream journalists were forced to concede that the Me Too movement was essentially over having been made a mockery of. And the twisted irony of this is of course that your average ordinary woman who has done nothing wrong is the one who suffers, because now women who come forth with legitimate claims of sex abuse are now less likely to believe as a result of the boy who cried wolf effect, so they've helped no one in the long run. Moving to what Destiny had to say, he pointed out that the same cycle of rejecting any and all valid fact-based criticism is also currently killing the transgender community by making them appear equally unhinged. We are basically seeing with this the whole transgender woman competing in women's sports debate. Anyone with a general level of knowledge of sexual dimorphism and the biological differences between the male and female sex knows that a transgender woman will have clear advantages even with HRT unless it is taken very, very early. This is a 100% legitimate fact-based concern over the trans movement that even many leftists like Professor Dave and of course Destiny himself have repeated, which basically makes this the trans community's unsustainable belief. It's very obviously false to anyone who has studied things like this, to the point where it's honestly even more unsustainable than believe all women. And of course, similarly, the irony is that the people who will suffer from this deranged misinformation will of course be transgender individuals themselves, many of whom agree that we should acknowledge that trans women in sports often creates an unfair advantage. And again, all of this could have been avoided by the trans community if they would just accept valid criticism instead of falsely labeling all criticism as ma transphobia. When you reject all criticism regardless of whether or not that criticism is valid, you are basically rejecting any kind of objective truth, and once truth has been rejected, your ideology is doomed. TLDR, the point I am making here is that when people reject all this criticism and mislabel it as hate speech, the manifestation of an unsustainable belief in their political movement or ideology becomes inevitable, which will then eventually fall flat on its face, resulting in the movement being made the laughing stock of the entire world, and any people they were trying to defend end up, ironically, with even more shade thrown in their direction than before. The second issue is, of course, rallying around these famous figures and cults of personalities, many of whom who are gigantic gigantic grifters pulling very shady crap behind our backs, instead of course of focusing on facts and reason. Now, Lauren Southern name-dropped a lot of e-famous right-wing figures from back in the day and basically aired their dirty laundry. Again, I'm not going to go into the specifics of the drama too much. I will say that I would be in no way surprised if what she had to say about Milo and PGAW turns out to be true. But what's really going on here is a warning of what happens when we put too much faith in these influencers instead of thinking for ourselves. That's a really dumb and very dangerous mindset when people start considering opinions to be true just because those opinions came out of the mouths of their favorite e-celeb. And this also goes for small creators like myself. No one should ever take anything we have to say as gospel truth. I mean, just think about it rationally for a moment. Let's say, hypothetically, in three years from now, I have something like 500,000 subscribers. Would that magically make any of the arguments I've made or any of the empirical data and studies I've cited any more or less valid than they are now? No. Absolutely not. They would be exactly the same arguments, the exact same videos, and all the research and data would be the exact same research and data. Having a bigger sub count next to them wouldn't mean jack squat. It would not validate anything I have said, and that's what people need to realize. Popularity is not some divine stamp of approval, especially considering how wonky the algorithm can be sometimes. And so when you follow these people and just assume that they are correct just because they have some notoriety, well, that's just a bandwagon fallacy. For instance, going back to BreadTube, a huge unsustainable belief that BreadTube pushes is the idea that anyone even remotely right-wing is secretly a fascist somehow. Which is, of course, is obviously not true to anyone who has even a small amount of knowledge of economic right and free market theory such as what's available on Mises Institute. And because this is not true, BreadTube has to continuously make increasingly more deranged and out-of-touch arguments to maintain this lie. For many leftists, that fame alone is carrying them. For example, one comment I saw in my video on Vosh basically tried to argue that Vosh's personal opinion that Jordan Peterson was a literal Nashi was more valid than the political compass test I gave Peterson by using sources for things he has actually said for proof of his answers. This is a very big problem with people who worship these e-celebs, where you can just shove objective proof right in their faces that Vash is lying to them, and they will assume that the proof must not be valid because Vash said it, they believe it, and I guess that settles it. Hmm, where have we heard that kind of bias before? And again, more and more people are waking up to it because it's again, it's not 
a sustainable belief. It's only a matter of time before it becomes abundantly clear that there are alternatives to BreadTube ideology that have absolutely nothing to do with National Socialism. As the evidence of BreadTube's lies continues to pile up, they must perform increasingly ridiculous mental gymnastics to pay the increasing upkeep cost of this false belief. Eventually, Isla Bain points are not going to be enough to sustain it. At the end of the day, most of these people are what you would call lol cows, or in other words, narcissistic attention seekers who care more about advancing their own image instead of actually doing any serious research. And blindly following them like a herd of sheep obviously doesn't help the movement at all, because when your favorite Isolib figure does something to jump off the edge of the cliff, and the herd follows them off the cliff, everyone is going to notice, and it reflects absolutely horribly on any political movement, no matter what it is they are preaching. Anyways, the last example of unhinged behavior I want to point out shifts more towards unhinged behavior purported by the individual. I could make an entire video on this subject alone and probably will sometime, but the gist of it is we all need to avoid putting ourselves in echo chambers. When we freely decide to surround ourselves only with those who agree with us, then beliefs are never challenged, which makes false beliefs increasingly more likely to form. I see this with leftist echo chambers like r slash politics, and to some degree reddit in general. And I see this on the right with people who lock themselves in these weird conspiracy theory echo chambers, where they think the world is under control of alien reptiles, and constantly share videos with each other of alleged shapeshifting, and of course all of them are just encoding errors, it's completely absurd. And when people who have spent too much time locked in their echo chambers go out into the wild, they of course make complete and total fools of themselves, because they forget how to function in real life. Normies don't believe the government is controlled by aliens in real life, and the average person finds woke toyed plebit behavior to be pretty darn cringe. In fact, that's largely why SJWs, as they were called in the previous decade, found themselves on the receiving end of the skeptic community's wrath, because their behavior of attacking random people for so just causes was completely deranged and off-putting. So when individuals go out and behave like that, the average person is going to want absolutely nothing to do whatsoever with the political ideology they are selling. So that's something to keep in mind as an individual. As individuals, we can always freely choose to take steps to prevent us from making a complete ass of ourselves. Because when you think about it, that's really why leftists got shat on from 2014 to 2016. It wasn't so much what they believed, but rather it was how they delivered it in the most idiotic and aggressive manner that they could think of, which allowed for outrage porn creators like Paul Joseph to dismantle them back then simply by making fun of them. He didn't even have to make good arguments, he just had to show them acting deranged and they had already lost the battle just from that alone. The point here is that we all need to be aware of how a lack of internal constructive criticism, lack of self-checks, and rallying around these cults of personalities and e-celebs instead of hard facts and data can lead to behavior that makes your entire movement come across as completely deranged and out of touch with the average person. Because when you sit the average Joe down and talk about this kind of drama that goes on in the political movement, if you think about it, most people are just trying to live their lives and do their jobs and get on with their day and they aren't really going to care which of these political e-celebs is the biggest back. Stabber. No, what most people are going to do is look at this behavior and simply reflect it on the political movement they represent. It essentially makes your entire movement, in the eyes of normies at least, to appear completely insane regardless of whether or not your overall message is true regardless of the moral validity of your principles. Whether you are a conservative, a libertarian, a leftist, centrist, whatever, doesn't matter, this applies to everyone. However, I am indeed a right-leaning libertarian, and so I would like to wrap this up by going over how libertarians can avoid the same mistakes of the alt-right and breadtube that led to their downfall. For the first problem I mentioned, we need to make sure we are avoiding groupthink and purity. Minarchists and classical liberals often have good ideas that provide immediate benefits to society that help the libertarian right. Constantly declaring them as impure doesn't always help, so rightist unity is better than getting nothing done. For the second problem, really just be aware of the bandwagon fallacy. We should not involve ourselves with pointless e-celeb drama, a person's idea is not more or less correct based on the number of followers next to their name. Fortunately, I think libertarians do a pretty good job already of avoiding this. If you are a libertarian in any capacity, chances are good that you have a higher IQ on average, and are thus more likely to understand why being an unquestioning sheep playing follow the leader is a bad thing. So let's just keep that up. And for the third issue, all we have to do is just look at the alt-right and the cult of woke's poor behavior in public and learn from their mistakes. All it takes is one viral video of a person representing libertarian views, making a complete fool of themselves in order to severely harm our movement. So don't be that guy. Anyways, that's all for now. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, subscribe, and all that. Also, for a minor channel update, I now have a Discord server, so just follow the rules of Discord's TOS and you are free to participate. Thanks for watching, till next time.